you know better than anyone how concrete floors scratch, dull, and turn brown over time, as well as its impact on the image and operational costs of your facility. Tenants' finished concrete processes enable you to change and improve the appearance of your floors. This increases positive customer and employee perception of your facility's cleanliness, enhances its visual appeal, increases light reflectivity, and extends the useful life of your concrete floors. Here is how it works. By using our system, you turn your tenant scrubber into a concrete finishing machine. The system includes patented Dyma brush grit tools and the right tenant scrubber, along with specially formulated tenant finished concrete cleaner maintainer, or the award-winning ECH2O activated water technology. As the tenant scrubber propels forward, polishing solution is distributed from the solution tank to the polishing head, where patented Dyma brush abrasive tools clean and polish your floors. The concrete slurry that is created by the polishing process is held in suspension by the solution as the powerful, highly efficient vacuum and squeegee system removes soilage and deposits it in the scrubber's recovery tank, leaving a clean surface that is ready for the next step. At the heart of the system are the Dyma brush tools. The process includes moving step by step through these innovative diamond impregnated tools. Depending on the condition of your floor, it may be necessary to start with a concrete preparation tool before continuing on to the series of polymer blade tools with increasing finer diamond grits. As you move through the series of tools, the pores of your concrete floor are progressively closed until you reach your desired level of shine. Combining Dyma brush tools with the power and water pickup ability of the proper tenant scrubber, along with tenant's finished concrete cleaner maintainer, or tenant's ECH2O activated water technology, optimizes effectiveness to remove the dirty top layer of concrete and leave a clean, homogenized surface that is either ready for the next polishing or recoating step or for immediate traffic. Choosing the right scrubber with the appropriate down pressure and water pickup for the job is critical to the success of the polishing process. Depending on the makeup of your fleet, use Tenant's Heavy Duty Model 5700 Walk Behind Scrubber in Confined Spaces and to get close to walls, racks, and pallets. Larger, rider machines, like the Tenant Model 7300 or T20, are ideal for open areas to improve your operational efficiency. The polishing process begins with the assessment of your floor condition and your decision on the final level of shine that's desired. While the process will not repair bad concrete or remove stains and massive amounts of grime and buildup, it will dramatically improve the appearance of sound, dull, or slightly rough concrete. Keep in mind that all concrete slabs are different which means the results of polishing will be different. This chart visually shows the level of shine you might expect at each step in the process. The more process steps you use, the higher the shine level you will achieve. At this point, you have probably decided on the starting point and ending point for your particular application. If your floors are laden with moderate buildup of soilage or grime, you will probably start with the 2535 grit concrete preparation tool to strip the floor and prepare it for polishing. If you have light grime or buildup, you may be starting with the 100 grit concrete preparation tool. If your floor is in fair to good condition without a coating or buildup, you will be able to start with the 50 grit polymer blade polishing tool. No matter which tool you start with, the procedure is the same only the number of process steps changes. Before you start the process, check your local, state, or federal regulations for proper disposal of the wastewater that will result from the concrete finishing process. Be sure to follow their guidelines for disposal. In addition, be sure to follow all precautions listed in the appropriate product manual and read all safety labels on the products you will be using. To prepare for the process, Assemble everything you need for the job 
at a workstation. Include the items you will be using. Shrink wrap, tape, cutting blade, rubber gloves, rags, a tape measure, Dima brush concrete and polishing tools, tenant finished concrete cleaner maintainer, and an appropriate tenant scrubber. Prepare the area to be polished. Identify a 750 to 1500 square foot area floor. Remove all pallets, displays, or other objects from the area floor to be polished in order to prevent possible damage to the Dimer brush tools or to the machine's squeegees. If there are any exposed racking bolts or similar obstructions on the floor, use appropriate methods to ensure that they do not protrude above the surface of the floor. Sweep or dust mop the area. Using a tenon sweeper is ideal for this purpose. Apply shrink wrap, approximately 18 inches in width at floor level, around all racking to help protect merchandise and pallets from becoming soiled during the polishing process. Use 2 inch packing tape to attach the bottom edge of the shrink wrap to the floor. Then you're ready to polish the floor. Follow the machine's pre-operational checklist to be sure the scrubber is working at its peak performance level. Ensure the squeegees and scrub head skirts are in good condition and adjusted properly. Make sure the vacuum fan filter is clean and seated properly. Ensure the recovery tank is empty and clean. Drain and rinse out the solution tank and then fill it with water. Add tenant finished concrete cleaner maintainer to the solution tank at a ratio of one ounce of cleaner to one gallon of water. Or follow the recommended ratio of cleaning solution to water shown on the container label. If you are using Tenant's ECH2O activated water technology, make sure the solution tank has been filled with clear, cool water only. Finally, make sure the battery is fully charged. To begin the polishing process, install the appropriate tool that matches your floor's condition. Each Dima Brush polymer tool has color-coded blades to help make the various grits easy to identify. The brown colored tool is the 50 grit polymer tool. The 100 grit polymer tool is black. The 200 grit tool is blue. The 400 grit tool is green. The 1000 grit tool is red. And the 2000 grit tool is tan. To begin, place a set of 2535 grit or 100 grit concrete preparation tools on your scrubber. Skip this step and go on to step two if you have determined that your floor is in better condition. Set the solution flow to dispense solution at a very low rate, just enough to be sure the floor is wet. Do not operate the tools on a dry floor. Propel the machine forward at a speed of approximately one mile per hour. Adjust the scrubber's down pressure to its most aggressive setting. The method used to set or monitor the down pressure will differ depending upon the machine you are using, so refer to the machine manual for the proper setting. For example, when using the Model 5700 XP and Model 7300 machines, use brush down pressure setting number 2 for the 5700 XP and number 4 for the 7300. When using the 5700 standard 1 horsepower machine, Set and monitor the down pressure gauge to apply the highest possible down pressure without moving the gauge into the red zone. Tenant walk behind scrubbers are particularly suited to polishing next to walls, racks, and in tight congested areas. The side shifting scrub head of the model 7300 is adept at this as well. In open areas, work in a racetrack pattern from the outside towards the middle. Overlap each pass by an inch or two. For aisles, Start in the middle of the aisle and complete four passes on the same track. Then shift the machine half the width of the polishing head toward the aisle's edge and complete four more passes. When you are done with those passes, shift the machine half the polishing head's width again to meet the edge. Do the same on the other side of the middle. Here is a tip for turning when using the Tenant 7300 rider. The brushes are directly under the operator and the machine has a very tight turning radius. 
when scrubbing from line to line, go all the way to the line and make a hard turn. This eliminates large arches on your passes. After the first pass with the scrubber, slightly overlap the path of subsequent passes in order to achieve a uniform floor appearance. Continue your passes until the floor has a uniform white appearance, which usually requires six to eight passes. Then move to the next step in the process. Recover solution on every pass. Do not double scrub, and never let the tools run dry. In the process guide, you will find a chart that shows the average number of passes needed for each step. Use the suggested number of passes as a guideline. The first step is the most important to achieving the best result. Do not continue to the second step until uniform results are achieved in step one, even if additional passes are needed. If you do a good job on the first step, the remaining steps will typically take five passes each. If the floor has low spots after you have made six to eight overlapping passes with the first tool in your process, make a few more passes to be sure the floor has an even appearance. Remember, the objective is to move to the next tool in the process only after there is no longer any noticeable difference from the previous pass. For the most part, when the entire surface has a uniform appearance, you can move to the next step. Once you have made the required number of passes in the initial step, empty and flush out the recovery tank and fill the solution tank. Change to the next higher grit tool, in this case the 50 grit polishing tool, and polish the area again using the prescribed number of overlapping passes, generally five. When you have completed the proper number of passes with the 50 grit polishing tool, the floor will look slightly more polished than the last pass using the concrete tool. Notice that the floor is smoother. Note, if at any time during the process the scrubber's recovery tank becomes full, be sure to empty it and flush it with water before continuing. Once the floor is of uniform appearance and looks slightly better than it did at the end of the prior step, move on to step three. Generally, the floor will look like this after five overlapping passes. Empty and flush out the recovery tank and fill the solution tank. Change to the 100 grit polishing tool. Make approximately five overlapping passes with these tools. When the floor is uniform and looks slightly more polished than the last of the passes in step two, you have completed step three, and you are ready to move on to step four. Empty and flush out the recovery tank. Fill the solution tank. Then change to the 200 grit tools and polish the floor for five passes, or until it is uniform in appearance and is more polished than the final pass of step three. Empty and flush out the recovery tank. Fill the solution tank. Then change to the 400 grit tools and polish the floor for five passes or until it is uniform in appearance and more polished than the final pass of step four. Once you've achieved this look, you have completed step five. If you have chosen to stop at this level of luster, as many industrial companies choose to do, you will have completed the process and it will be time to clean up your equipment. Otherwise, continue on to step six. Empty and flush out the recovery tank. Fill the solution tank. Then change to the 1000 grit tools and polish the floor for five passes or until it is uniform in appearance and is more polished than the final pass of step five. Once you have achieved this look, you have completed step six. The floor will have a fairly polished look at this point, and many users of the system will choose to stop here. If you have chosen to proceed to step seven, empty and flush out the recovery tank. Fill the solution tank. Then change to the 2000 grit tools and polish the floor for five passes, or until it is uniform in appearance and is more polished than the final pass of step six. The floor will have a highly polished look. Floor appearance and image are often very important to companies choosing this look. At this point, you will have reached the final stage of polishing. The floor will have a highly polished uniform appearance 
that will reflect positively on both you and your company. Once you have reached the final step in the process and your desired level of shine has been reached, it is time to clean up the area and the machine. Drive the scrubber to your designated cleanup area. Empty the recovery tank into a designated receptacle in accordance with local and company requirements. Flush out the recovery tank. Be sure not to leave any concrete residue in the tank. Thoroughly clean the pleats of the vacuum fan filter by rinsing with low pressure water. Recharge the machine's battery. If you will not be using your Dimer brush tools for a while, you will need to condition them before their next use. Simply soak polymer brushes in water, usually 72 hours in cold water or 31 hours in water that is over 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you have reached the level of shine you wish to maintain, you should manually sweep or dust mop the area frequently, especially in high traffic areas to remove grit and debris that can scratch and dull concrete floors. Be sure to clean up spills as soon as possible. Concrete is a highly reactive material that stains quickly. For daily maintenance, the chemical-free way to keep your floors looking their best is to scrub them using a scrubber equipped with Tenant's ECH2O activated water technology and Tenant light-duty polypropylene brushes. Otherwise, we recommend maintaining your floor's luster by using a Tenant scrubber and our finished concrete cleaner maintainer. At a minimum, use a neutral pH balanced cleaner to prevent damaging your concrete floors. Once a week, regardless of the chemistry you choose, use the last dimer brush tool from the polishing process instead of polypropylene brushes during your daily scrubbing. If you notice the luster of your floor begin to dull, drop to the next, more coarse grit tool used in the polishing process and progress back up to the finer grit tool. Once you've completed the process and followed the steps in this video, you will have floors that have a polished uniform appearance that will reflect positively on both you and your company. We are sure you will find the process to be a reliable and efficient cleaning solution that offers superior performance and an increased image at a lower total cost of application than other traditional diamond grinding methods on the market. If you have any questions about the process, just call a highly trained tenant representative. They stand ready to help you reach the results you want every time.